I really find the ability to move information and ideas and resources visually super helpful for the kinds of academic work that I do, whether it's teaching or research or development of creative projects. And this new platform, Scrintle, came on the scene recently. I know it's been around for a bit, but it just became publicly available. So I wanted to check it out and see what I could do with it. Let's get started here. I'm going to open up the board. And this is the board now that it's completed that students engaged with. I shared it. Um, it is published. So you can see here um, it's a set of cards that are interconnected. So let's start at the top. First thing that I wanted to do is um, make sure that people knew what to do when they opened up Scrintle because this was from, I think pretty much all of them would be the first time they were in some cases ever heard of Scrintle and definitely like engaged with it. When I started creating the cards, I knew that it would be pretty difficult to follow if there wasn't some kind of navigation system. So I built a navigation system into this first card where it says start here and double click. So let's do that. So here's a note to the students in the class. And as you can see, it's sort of conversational. I knew that there would probably be some tension that some people were experiencing <laughs> in having to work with yet another platform that I was introducing to the class. Too many choices! Um, but it kind of takes them through some context. And then down here, it starts the set of modules. So the first thing they can do is start by either reviewing materials from class for synthesis here or engaging with this video. And then they can explore and work on the following different modules. So you have the starter note and it sort of connects to several of the other notes. And you can tell when you have this highlighted, it shows you this card here connects to all the other cards in the map. So as I was using Scrintle and figuring out how to work it and creating different cards, I started to think of the modules in terms of these different kinds of clusters. So you could see here, um, there's a group of sort of interconnected cards over here. That's one group. There's another group over here in this area. There's another group over here. And then there's another group over here and a little bit there with um, related cards there. There's an exit ticket that people had to do or were supposed to do <laughs> before they left class. So one of the thing that Scrintle was really useful for was planning the overview of the class. And then since it wasn't designed to be done sequentially, and I was giving students the opportunity to kind of think through how much time they might need on any given module, Scrintle lets me lay it out in a way that's nonlinear, and I love this. And it made me think about the way that the flow might work. So to engage with any particular module, you could either be looking at this whole board and clicking on a card, or you could go right back to this first home note and um, go down here and click on a card in this way. So here it opens up this new card, Engage with this video on learner-centeredness. And this is another... Um, YouTube video that I made uh, around one of the readings that we had for class and what I did is I connected it to the context of music learning and teaching. And if you're curious, this is on learner centeredness and you can check out the video on YouTube if you want. But right now I'm just showing you that I embedded a YouTube video in this card. And what's pretty cool about this that Scrintle allows you to do is you can either click on it and it'll show you the video right in the card, or you can kind of pop it out this way and you can adjust the size. This would be really handy if you wanted to take notes or you wanted to do something with it or move it around or make it larger, um, but it, it stays in that card. So when they're done, they could click out of this and that doesn't delete the note, it just closes it down. And then uh, you're back to this card over here. So hypothetically, someone could open up this card, this main one, the start here card, and click on all these other cards and always have this available so they don't get lost. The other thing it does is if you click on this little button here, it says locate, and it will kind of move you along the area of the map where it's sort of centered. Now, again, all of this I was figuring out during this first day, this first couple of hours that I was learning Scrintle. So I already was pretty easily able to, well... Easy. What does that mean, easy? Maybe not easily, but without much friction, I was able to create all these interconnected projects. So let's take a look at this area over here. This was the first video that I just showed you, the first sort of note to work with if they wanted to start with this one. 
And then at the bottom it says, make sure to also watch, engage with this video on autonomy. And if you look at my note on the learner process, learning process, the one thing that I haven't figured out how to do, or perhaps you can't do it in Scrintle, which um, was a little bit of friction on my end, was I would like to rename a card when it's in the text of another card so it has a better flow. So instead of make sure to also watch, engage with this video on autonomy, I could write make sure to also watch this video on autonomy and it would link to this card where there's another video in here. And so here's another video. This one I did not put on YouTube. It's in this case, I put it on Dropbox and then uploaded it to Scrintle and it works fine. The thing is, is when you are having your own videos, I couldn't figure out the way to make it embed. So it's just, you click on it and here it is. And that is a sort of pretty much a standalone card. So you could go from here to here. You can also go to this review for synthesis note. You could see here, um, I have a link and this would take students outside of Scrintle into a Miro board that we've been using for class. This is another point where there's likely going to be friction as students are navigating multiple platforms. Now, why not have this in Scrintle? Well, because up until the point that I was learning Scrintle, I was doing a lot of interactive collaborative work with the class in Miro. The broader point here is that um, you can easily create links out of the Scrintle board. You could see here that then just like this first note is sort of has a navigation menu in it on the bottom here, I did the same thing for this note. So on the bottom here, next steps, choose what order you want to do the following is that these are more specific to this part of the module in this case, reviewing for synthesis. So here it's not going to link to project work from the class. It's going to center around working with the main concepts and frameworks from the reading. So they could engage with the video and learner centeredness if they didn't do that already. Um, they can engage with the video on autonomy if they didn't do that already. Oh, apply synthesized principles, ideas, approaches to a teaching context. And here are, uh, it's, it's basically asking students to reflect on the reading and it's sort of like a little mini assignment here. And it's asking them to create a flip video. This would go to flip what used to be called Flipgrid, um, and then link your flip video. So again, I do have people traveling across multiple platforms quite often, which for some people that causes a lot of friction, but each, I, I tend to use each platform. That's the best for the particular use that we're working with. So you have this set of interactive modules, and then the next set is down here. I have multiple options there. It's not necessarily dictated that you either start here with reflecting on engagement constructs or start with scaffolding info. They're very, they're both related, but there's not a particular hierarchical order. So let's click on reflecting on engagement for student centered learning environments. Number one, another little mini assignment or project. Sometimes I call these, um, etudes activities, whatever you want to call it. Here's the first part, review the engagement constructs for student centered learning environments from the Lee and Hannafin. Um, now, here was, here was a case where I wanted to figure out what would it be like to take something from an article and put it into the Scrintle board rather than having to have people go back to the article itself. And so it was just a way to make it a little bit easier, reduce the friction a bit. So here, um, people can click on this note and notice that the nice thing here is that when you click on a card from Scrintle, it opens up another card, but it doesn't close out the first card. That way they can have the assignment here, project, activity, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then over here, you have this two tables from the article that you can reference, but I gave them the option, or you can use your PDF of the article if you want to go that route. Now, if you're thinking, well, this is a little small, I can pop it out and there it is. Same thing with table two, two different tables. I could pop it out here. So you have these resources that this activity links to. And then I have um, an interconnected link. This is some information on scaffolding that I curated. And what I ended up doing is make, instead of linking to a PDF here, I link to this card. I have some additional context on the PDF. And then I put the PDF right here. Again, this is another one of those cases where this is a PDF file from my notes from Obsidian. I can maximize it there. I could also choose this pop out. I really like the way that you can work with these additional media files in Scrintle. And you'll notice that, I mean, I made this pretty large and it still looks nice. So I'm going to close these out. And then this you'll notice here when I'm opening up the Lee and Hannafin additional card here. 
it shows up on the board. Now, it's possible that someone would have gone straight to here and not known what the, what the purpose of that was for. You don't need it to appear in the board. You can actually hide these. And because of the way Scrintle works, I don't have to have them on this card on the board at all, but I could delete this. And when I'm linking to it, it still would link to it because it's not specific to this board. It's a card in the Scrintle system. So two years from now, I could be working on another project and go, oh, you know what? I want that Lee and Hannafin table and just put it into whatever that class is two years from now. And because it's in a card in the system, as long as it's in Scrintle and I don't delete it, I can access this card from pretty much any other board. I use them. And that's super powerful. So the development of these modules in this case can be iterative. It could be developed over time. And I can kind of take pieces of them out and move them into other classes, move them into other modules. I think that's really important. It's similar to um, the way that I use files in Obsidian. But in this case, I like the fact that it's visual and I like that I can share it and make it public or, or share it with classes. So that's that part of the board. If we go over to this part of the board, different approaches to student-centeredness and projects, another activity, it's taking people through what they should do, some reflective work. And then I have two resources from the class. This goes to um, a blog post and this goes to a card that goes to another card. I could pop this out. This is from one of the readings, the same reading that the other tables came from. Yeah, there's that funky thing again. I don't know that, what's up with that. So that resource is in this card. And so it just makes it, I would say, fairly immediate and easy to open up resources. I can see how the board can become cluttered over time. So I'll have to talk to the class to find out how they dealt with that. Just tell me where the you want us to go. In terms of multiple cards being opened at once if they weren't closing them down. but. That was a, just another activity there. And again, you could you don't need to have these cards on the board. But one of the reasons why I left it on the board was because I enjoyed the visual relationships between all the, all the different cards and the different ideas and the different concepts. And that is one of the reasons why I was using Scrintle in the first place is because of the visualization, the mapping out. Here is an interesting way to see all the interconnectedness of these different ideas. And when you click on something, you can see that the own it, learn it, share it framework is connected to different approaches to student-centeredness. It's also connected to thinking around scaffolding and the notion of engagement constructs from the Lee and Hannafin article. Over here on the right side are additional, I would call these projects because they are projects. This is for the part of the class where I'm inviting students to work on their personal project. So it just has sort of a framing of how they might engage in their personal projects. So again, another set of instructions here, some reflection, getting them to do a couple of things, and then connecting back to different notes and resources on the board. So, okay, refer back to this, here it is, getting this other card. So you can see the interconnectedness of the card. It's very possible that someone might have accessed a card at multiple different points along the class, and that's sort of the point, is that these ideas keep coming back, they inform other aspects of the class, and now you can see those different kinds of relationships. And then the final um, part of this module or set of modules is this Solar Futures project, a research project I'm working on, and um, it's I'm inviting the people in the class to work on the Solar Futures project. And finally, we have the exit ticket video, just something to get people to um, kind of reflect on the way out and a way for me to kind of get a sense of what was happening and what were people thinking in the class. Also just modeling one form of assessment that you can have in the class. The fact that I was able to do all of this in just a couple of hours while learning Scrintle makes me feel like a lot of people with some kind of background in these sort of endless whiteboard type spaces and platforms or people who have used interlinking notes before and have had the concept of a backlink or at least hyperlinks can actually get in and Scrintle and start working on something of substance pretty quickly by quickly. A couple of hours but it's not like you need months of working with this platform to figure out how to use it if you've never used any kind of visual platform like this or you've never used backlinks or hyperlinked it will probably take a little bit more time but there are a lot of resources available so highly recommend checking it out let me know what questions you have about using Scrintle or about this particular use of it in terms of interactive modules for a class hope this was helpful and see you around next time
Hey everyone, I'm Evan Tobias. I'm on the music learning and teaching faculty at Arizona State University, and I support music educators of all kinds, imagine possibilities for music learning and teaching, and then make those possibilities a reality.